Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel. Today we are going to study normal anatomy of tongue and developmental disturbances. This is a unique thought which I have put into action. Usually when I used to study developmental disturbances of tongue, I used to forget one or the other thing about tongue, like certain position of a papillae or about foramen siccum. So here I have clubbed two interrelated topics together. Please do hit the thumbs up if you like this unique method of studying and also reply me in the comment section about this and if you have not subscribed yet please do subscribe my channel also to get the pdf of this video follow me on telegram channel and uh, to get in touch with daily image based questions and the important concepts follow me my page dento woman on instagram and facebook so any further ado let's get started we are going to study parts and development of tongue papillae of the tongue muscles of the tongue arterial supply venous drainage and lymphatic drainage nerve supply and the developmental disturbances parts tongue is basically divided into three parts a root tip and a body root is attached to stylet process and soft palate above mandible and hyoid bone below because of these attachments we are not able to swallow the tongue itself and the tip and body body is divided into two upper surface or dorsum and the inferior surface here in the picture you can clearly see this part is our tip this is the base of the tongue and this is the dorsum of the tongue right okay so let's study the parts of the tongue in detail First of all we'll see the V shape sulcus terminalis right and at the center of sulcus terminalis we can see the foramen siccum foramen siccum represents the site from which the thyroid diverticulum grows down in the embryo right and now coming to the papillae on the sulcus terminalis we can see the circumvallate papillae over here the taste buds are uh, residing inside this circumvallate papillae okay then comes the foliate papillae filiform papillae filiform papillae are most numerous in number and then the fungiform papillae they are distributed on the lateral borders as well as on the tip of the tongue seeing the posterior part of the tongue we are having pal palate and tonsil on both the sides yes and the lymphoid follicles as well the pharyngeal or the lymphoid part of the tongue it lies behind the palatoglossal arches and the sulcus terminalis as you can see behind the uh, sulcus terminalis here this portion and the posterior most part of the tongue this is the posterior most part so it is uh, connected to the epiglottis by three folds of mucous membrane the median epiglottic fold in the center and the lateral glosso epiglottic fold on both the sides right it connects the tongue with the epiglottis and on the both side of the median epiglottic fold we are having two depressions which are known as vellicula in this image we can see the inferior surface of the tongue here two structures are important first is the plica fimbriata it is nothing but a fold and uh, deep lingual vein the major venous drainage of the tongue is through deep lingual vein coming to the papillae of the tongue circumvallate papillae they are the largest one or two millimeter in diameter and situated in front of sulcus terminalis as we have just seen and they have taste buds as well okay second is the fungiform papillae they are numerous near the tip and margins of the tongue okay and some are also scattered over the tongue they are distinguished by their bright red color this is the characteristic of fungiform papillae right then filiform papillae they are smallest and most numerous and they are pointed and covered with keratin keratin is the speciality of filiform papillae each papilla is having one or the another characteristic so you have to remember it okay 
and the last is foliate papillae they are present at lateral borders just in front of circumvallate papillae and they are leaf shape okay so circumvallate papillae what is the characteristic they are largest and they are having taste buds in front of the sulcus terminalis fungiform papillae they are distinguished by their bright red color filiform papillae they are numerous and they have keratin and foliate papillae they are leaf shaped and they are present at the border just in front of circumvallate papillae right so if we compare the papillae in size then then largest is the circumvallate then fungiform and filiform are the smallest here we can see the histopathological diagram of the uh, papillae and the taste buds okay starting from the largest circumvallate papillae okay it is a uh, they are in cylindrical projection okay can you can mark out it's a cylindrical projections and it is also having the small taste buds in it right yes and uh, then comes the fungiform papillae smaller in size than the circumvallate it is between the filiform and circumvallate is the fungiform papillae it it is having a round head right and a narrow pedicle area filiform papillae they are pointed and they are smallest and most numerous and they are covered with keratin okay filiform is covered with keratin moving further taste buds taste buds are having two type of cells cystangular cells and gustatory cells cystangular cells they are the supporting cells okay and gustatory cells and they carry the uh, sensation of the taste here are the nerve fibers okay so it carries the taste sensation and then it passes forward these buds are most numerous on the sides of the circumvallate papillae and on the walls of the surrounding sulci they are numerous over the foliate papillae and over the posterior one third of the tongue and sparsely distributed on the fungiform papillae the soft palate remember filiform papillae is not having any taste buds okay yes and uh, they are sparsely distributed over fungiform papillae soft palate epiglottis and pharynx there are no taste buds on the mid dorsal region mid dorsal region of the oral part of the tongue okay so developmental disturbances related to papillae this is a uh, very important considering your mcqs okay so here first we'll talk about filiform papillae okay filiform papillae mein four conditions can occur okay first thing is complete absence remember in the sequence which i am saying okay complete absence of filiform papillae is with median rhomboid plasitis okay now coming to the hypertrophy okay this is the second hypertrophy size of the filiform papillae increases from 1 mm to 15 mm in black hairy tongue third multiple areas of desquamation of filiform papillae is with benign migratory glossitis or geographic tongue and fourth atrophy of filiform papillae is with riboflavin or b2 deficiencies okay i hope it's uh, easy now if you study in this sequence like complete absence of filiform is with median rhomboid glossitis hypertrophy that is filiform papillae increases in size in black hairy tongue then desquamate in benign migratory glossitis and atrophy of filiform papillae in riboflavin or b2 deficiency and swollen hyperemic fungiform papillae in strawberry tongue in familial dysautonomia you are having absence of fungiform and circumvallate papillae so there are only two mcqs where the answer is fungiform or circumvallate otherwise in all these four we are having filiform either atrophy hypertrophy or complete absence or desquamation okay but remember it very nicely and do not leave any doubt in it okay 
coming to the muscles of the tongue we are having two types of muscles intrinsic muscles and extrinsic muscles intrinsic muscles of tongue they occupy the upper part of the tongue and are attached to the submucous fibrous layer and to the median fibrous septum they are superior longitudinal inferior longitudinal transverse and vertical in the extrinsic muscle we have genioglossus which is the muscle which runs from genial tubercle to the tongue hyoglossus from hyoid to the tongue styloglossus from styloid process to the tongue and palatoglossus from soft palate to the tongue so these are extrinsic and uh, the above four are intrinsic muscles okay here in the diagram you can see it very clearly okay yes uh first we'll start with superior longitudinal muscle first of all this is the what tip of the tongue okay this is the tip and this is the base you should not have any confusion in this so in the tip portion anterior portion we are having superior longitudinal muscle over here and inferior longitudinal muscle is here on both the side okay then the transverse muscle and the vertical muscle so let's revise it one more time superior longitudinal is here inferior longitudinal transverse muscle and the vertical muscle these four are intrinsic and extrinsic muscles are genioglossus here this is the life saving muscle then the hyoglossus muscle which is this and uh, styloglossus over here so what does the superior longitudinal do it shortens the tongue and makes the dorsum concave make the dorsum of your tongue concave yes right now and just see the muscle which is working is superior longitudinal inferior longitudinal it shortens the tongue and makes the dorsum convex okay transverse what does it do it makes the tongue narrow and elongated and vertical it makes the tongue broad and flattened what is the action of genioglossus it protrudes the tongue this is the only muscle of the tongue which causes the protrusion of the tongue hyoglossus it causes it depresses the tongue styloglossus retracts the tongue and palatoglossus elevates the tongue now coming to the clinical anatomy Genioglossus is called the safety muscle of the tongue because in the paralyzed patient the tongue will fall back on the oropharynx and block the air passage. During anesthesia the tongue is pulled forward to clear the air passage. Genioglossus is the only muscle of the tongue which protrudes it forward. It is used for testing the integrity of hypoglossal nerve also. If hypoglossal nerve of right side is paralyzed the tongue on protrusion will deviate to the right side okay. coming to the arterial supply of the tongue it is derived from lingual artery which is a branch of external carotid artery and the root of the tongue is also supplied by tonsillar artery which is a branch of facial artery so it is having two arterial supplies from the lingual artery and from the tonsillar artery also remember the lingual artery is branch of external carotid and tonsillar artery is branch of facial artery here in the diagram we can see the structures which are surrounding the tongue more clearly okay so first of all we'll study the lingual artery the main arterial supply of the tongue it comes from here okay this is the lingual artery going on and this is the external carotid artery it is running from here and the branch of it is lingual artery and the styloglossus muscle from styloid process to tongue okay the deep lingual artery and the genioglossus muscle life saving muscle it causes the protrusion of the tongue and the geniohyoid muscle over here 
venous and lymphatic drainage deep lingual vein is the largest and principal vein of the tongue it is visible on the inferior surface of the tongue we saw this in the first diagram itself right on the inferior surface there was a deep lingual vein running on both the sides of the tongue here in the image we can study the lymphatic drainage okay first of all we'll study this this image first see tip of the tongue drains into submental group okay anterior two third of the tongue drains into submandibular group of both the sides okay posterior one third drains into deep cervical group and the posterior most part also drains into the deep cervical group jugular digastric you can see in this picture okay and the whole lymph from the deep cervical from jugular jugular digastric from submental and submandibular finally drains into jugulo omohyoid group that's why uh, they are known as the lymph nodes of the tongue okay. now supply seven out of the eight muscles they are supplied by hypoglossal now that is four intrinsic muscle and three extrinsic muscles are supplied by hypoglossal now here you can see only palatoglossus this is the palatoglossus is supplied by vago accessory complex which is our 11th cranial now okay and seven muscles of the tongue are supplied by hypoglossal this is we are talking about motor supply okay yeah and general sensation from anterior two third of the tongue is by lingual now and taste by cauda tympani now okay and from the circumvallate papillae and the posterior one third of the tongue both general sensation and taste is carried by glossopharyngeal now and uh, both general sensation and the taste by internal laryngeal now is carried out in the posterior most part of the tongue now why tongue is having such varying now supply see the root cause of varying now supply lies over here because of the development of the tongue okay the anterior two third part the anterior two third part of the tongue develops from the first and second brachial arch that's why it is having the supply from the uh, cauda tympani which is a branch of facial now and uh, the general sensation by lingual now which is a branch of maxillary posterior one third of the tongue it develops from third arch okay and which is the nerve of third arch glossopharyngeal if you have done pharyngeal arches by now then you will understand it very easily okay the fourth arch which forms small dorsal part of hypobrachial eminence okay fourth arch so internal laryngeal nerve is the nerve of fourth brachial arch basically the mcqs related to tongue especially the nerve supply are very easy if you have a sound concept of pharyngeal arches okay once you will understand the pharyngeal arches nicely this uh, portion would be very clear for you okay so coming to the developmental disturbances first is the median rhomboid glossitis here the defective fusion of the lateral processes of tongue on the posterior dorsal part leaving a rhomboid shape smooth mucosa which is lacking papillae okay we studied in the chart earlier which papilla is lacking in median rhomboid glossitis it is filiform papillae complete absence of filiform papillae is seen the focal area is susceptible for recurrent chronic atrophic candidiasis here in the diagram you can see the lateral lingual swellings over here right yeah so defective fusion of uh, the lateral lingual swelling will lead to a rhomboid shape which uh, appears as median rhomboid glossitis okay and also note the thyroid diverticulum okay it is just behind the it is just below the foramen siccum okay and this is the tuberculum impa here in this image you can see this is the clinical picture 
of median rhomboid glossitis. Macroglossia. So MCQs uh, have been asked which among the following does not show macroglossia. So you should know which are the diseases or the conditions in which enlargement of the tongue occurs. Okay, macroglossia is nothing but the enlargement of the tongue. So you have to remember as many names as you can. Okay, okay it is seen in idiopathic muscle hypertrophy, hemangioma, lymphangioma, Down syndrome, beckwith widman syndrome, lingual thyroid, mucopolysaccharidosis, Tolno syndrome and in the metabolic disorders hypothyroidism, cretinism and diabetes. In inflammatory conditions like syphilis, Ludwig's in China, pemphigus vulgaris, pneumonia, rheumatic fever, typhoid, candidiasis and pellagra. In all these conditions enlargement of the tongue occurs. Apart from this in systemic conditions like myxedema acromegaly, hypertrophy and neurofibromatosis and traumatic conditions like surgery or hemorrhage, enlargement of the tongue occurs. Also the infiltrative conditions like amyloidosis and sarcoidosis, macroglossia occurs. Coming to the benign migratory glossitis, okay. First of all, this is the clinical picture of benign migratory glossitis. It is also called as wandering rash, okay or a geographic tongue. It is also known as geographic tongue and uh, its dominant characteristic is a constantly changing path. Okay, these are the serpiginous white lines. Psoriasis like lesion is this and a thickened layer of keratin is infiltrated with neutrophils. Monroe's abscess. As it is a psoriasis like lesion, Monroe's abscess is seen in this. This, this will come in general surgery as well. Okay, Monroe's abscess is the characteristic feature of psoriasis. So as of benign migratory glossitis. Chronic inflammatory cells can be seen within stroma. Coming to the hairy tongue. This is the clinical picture of hairy tongue. Here, hypertrophy of filiform papillae occurs. Okay, filiform papillae grows here in this condition. Its size increases from 1 mm to 15 mm. Okay. So, it's a commonly observed condition of defective desquamation of a filiform papillae that result from a variety of precipitating factors. Often occurs in individual with poor oral hygiene. Tobacco use, coffee or tea drinking, 15 mm filiform papillae with mild hyperkeratosis. It is uh, seen more in male and in HIV patients. Occasional candidal overgrowth is the complication of hairy tongue. Now coming to the lingual thyroid nodule. Okay, The thyroid gland develop in the embryo from the central floor of the pharynx by means of endodermal invagination or diverticulum. The tongue forms at the same time from this pharyngeal floor and is anatomically associated with thyroid gland by connection through thyroglossal tract. Lingual remnant of which is known as foramen siccum. We studied about foramen siccum, right? Okay, this is the position of foramen siccum, right? It can become lingual thyroid, okay? If it uh, persists over there, even after the fusion, and you can see the hyoid bone, thyroid gland is much below, okay? Here is the tongue and here is the thyroid gland. But during the development, uh, both are developing simultaneously. Thyroid is uh, originating, development of the thyroid originates from here and ends till here. This is the clinical picture of lingual thyroid nodule. This bright red structure, okay, is your lingual thyroid nodule, this structure. Lingual thyroid is an anomalous condition in which follicles of thyroid tissue are found in the substance of the tongue. This is the basic definition of lingual thyroid nodule. Even if you don't remember anything regarding development, it is fine. Just remember this much, that follicles of the thyroid tissue 
are found in the substance of the tongue which will lead to a lingual thyroid nodule. It is uh, clinically manifested as a nodular mass often seen in the midline but not always in the midline. It is deeply situated 2-3 to three centimeters in diameter. Presenting complaint will always be like dysphagia or dysphonia, dysapnea, hemorrhages with pain or a feeling of tightness in the throat. So guys, we are done with the normal anatomy of the tongue and developmental disturbances. I hope you like the video. Please like, comment and subscribe my channel. Thank you so much.